You know, our culture, I'm going to give you guys something to savor on. One coach, in his 10 years that he took over a program and led him into Division I. So like me. So one of these guys is me. Took over a program. Tough first five years, but nonetheless, you have to have it. 163 and 167. However, seven times he finished in the top four. Two regular season championships, NCAA tournament, NIT, right? Seven times in the top four. And had to play 70 money games. This other coach, first 10 years, 141 and 143, pretty close. Four times they finished top four. Two regular season championships just like us. One NCA just like us. One NIT just like us. 33 money games, so we played 37 more. Anybody want to gather a guess who the other coach is? He's pretty John famous. Wood. As a matter of fact, he's going into the Hall of Fame. And it wasn't John Wooden. It was a mid-major small school. One you guys love. And a matter of fact, a lot of you went to go see him live. And a lot of you saw him live in our own gym. Belmont, that's correct. That was Rick Bird's record his first 10 years. So believe me, we know what we're doing. We're going on the right path. But when the day's done, it's a player coach team. And between the black lines, they have to get it done, and they know that. Questions? First of all, how long was the ramp that led the animals onto the ark? <laughs> 18 inches was the gap that was ventilating the roof. So when they threw up, vomited, or when they had to use the restroom, to the, water. the people did not get sick. So the fact that that vent was there tells you one thing. What? In order to win, the littlest details make the biggest difference. And if you don't take care of the little details, then you'll never get to the mountaintop. Second question, we know what these guys can do. What new player do you expect to make a significant impact? You know, the one thing, Dave, if you look back at last year, people don't realize Emmanuel Lambright never played because he was hurt. And we really expected large from him. Trip Day, you don't know this. Trip Day was the most efficient freshman that ever played in the history of our school. 13 points a game in 21 minutes, 65% from the fields, 45 from three, and 82 from the line. 13 a game as a freshman. Never played because he was hurt. So those two guys are trying to fight back against what you just asked about. Josh Endicott, junior college transfer, defensive player of the year, 91 mile an hour fastball as a freshman in Cincinnati. He has come, I told Coach Moon this morning, no one's come further faster from getting the wrath from me that they need when they're young, ask Garrett, and has gotten it no more because they figured it out that quickly. That kid has come a long way, a long, long way. Ezekiel Balligan, another senior, who can do things with a 7-1 wingspan at six foot six that you've never seen before. He turned the Liberty game around on his steel dunk when we went from zone to man down 13 and one by five going away against the champion team. When you look at Ryan Burkhart, a local from St. Augustine, 47% from three, he has shot the pee out of the ball and has realized the more you shoot, the more you know your identity, the better it'll be. Emmanuel Adedoyan has just been incredible. He is the only freshman on the team. He's the only quote-unquote new guy on the team. Comes from Oak Ridge, top 25, McDonald's All-American. We beat nobody to get him. Coach Kennan and per Coach Perkins, when Don and saw him, came back and said, it's a no-brainer, and it is. That kid is going to be really, really, really special, and he's going to play. And then the other one that people forget about, and I know, you know, Coach Moon loves when guys get bigger and stronger because maturity is such a big role in that. But when you redshirt like Dorian James did, and what he's doing right now on the floor, he arguably, if somebody was hurt, he arguably would be in the competition of, does he start? So we're deeper than we've been, and most years we've been seven or eight. You know that. So as a coach, I've got to continue to mature and figure out how to play more guys. As long as we're healthy, as long as attrition, and as long as illness doesn't play a part. For all four of you players, you can start. What is it like to play for Coach Driscoll? He broke all of y'all down. Now you break him down. <laughs> Apparently, Garrett 
Before you go to dinner that night, apparently Garrett does the best. <laughs> uh, it's amazing. Uh, just as you can tell, his fire and his passion is what is what really led me to come here. And just the stuff off the court was huge for me because, like, like I said, I wanted to leave to go home. And so, just knowing that, like, when I came here, I was going to be playing for a guy that genuinely cared about me as a person, and the whole staff is that way too. And so, for like for my mom, that was huge for her. Just like she had so much peace in knowing who I'm playing for. And so, like for me, it's deeper than on the court stuff because that's great. We know he's great at that. But then, like off the court, I know like. Like I told him the other night at dinner, I know if I called you next year when I'm off somewhere, that you would answer the phone and we could talk for an hour, and that it would be nothing. So that's what's special to me, and so that's why I think he's special. Like I know he's great on the court, but then, but people don't get to see what he does for us off the court too. So yeah, I mean, I'd agree with that. Um, I think very few people can say that their coach officiated their wedding. He <laughs> officiated mine. Like, I can go and talk to him about anything, anything that's going on in my life and my family, um, anything like that, and, and that off the court aspect, you know, he would literally do anything for you at any second. When you get on the court, it makes you want to play that much harder uh, for him and for our staff because they're, they're all the same way. But it just, it adds another level of trust knowing that it's not just, you know, he, he cares about us a lot deeper than basketball. So then when it comes to basketball, it's, it's easy to trust him. It's easy to go out there and play hard because, you know, you know he, he cares so deeply. You know, he said it better than I. Carrie said, you can't say it. Though. I, I was telling everybody I married JT. You know, I was going around telling everybody I married JT. And then people were like, you know, so officiating is a better way to say it. So well done. Oh, it's, it's, it's definitely amazing. Uh, I've never seen anybody with that much energy in my life since they wake up till, till they go to bed, I guess. But it's, it's uh. It's amazing. I, I hope I could be like that one day and uh, impact that many people uh, throughout my career or whatever I do. Uh, but it's, it's just amazing how he cares about all of us. It's, it's great. He's really great. Um, I mean, Coach, he, uh, you know, he, he tries to make you feel like, you know, you're not the only one going through it. You know, he does push-ups on the sideline when he misses layups. You know, he. You know, he, he goes through, you know, pretty much everything that we go through. Um, and, you know, he, he's just the biggest student of the game, of life, of, you know, everything. He's, he watches six hours of film, you know, right after practice or whatever, whenever, you know, he has the time. And, you know, he tries to learn as much as he can um, in every aspect of the game so that, you know, we, we're getting the best information. He goes to coaches' clinics. You know, he's just such a, um, a positive uh, role model in the community as well. And it's just, it's, it's incredible to, you know, know a person that, you know, just wants to give, 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 and give so much of himself, you know, that, you know, you just, you want to do the same for him. And it's, just, it's, just, it's been incredible um, getting to play for a coach and a coaching staff that, you know, reflects that as well. Um, a couple of players address this and anybody who wants to jump in, go ahead. But, uh, obviously with a lot of returning players, we're familiar with your game. We know what you can do, anybody who's watched the program. But how is this team going to be better this year? What areas on the floor are you going to be better? Uh, we're going to defend and we're going to rebound at a high level and we're going to do it consistently. And so we know, uh, I mean, we have stats, I mean, last eight games of the year we were top of the league and everybody talks about how good Liberty was defensively and how, like all these stats when they play in the tournament and stuff like that. We were better than they were the last eight games. So I mean, we're just building off of that, and so that's what we want to do at a high level. I mean, we got great guys that we know can score the ball, but if we don't defend, and you don't win, you don't win a lot of games. So that's what we're going forward with this year, and that's what we're going to try to do. Anybody else? Well, why would like Yvonne do that? How, how's this team going to be better? Um, or we, I think we're definitely uh, are, are in the right path. Like Eric said, uh, uh, we're trying to take off from the from the last uh, couple games we had last season, and. Uh, that's, that's just what we want to look at it. And then uh, add the new pieces, uh, the way that we can all, uh, a couple bit. Yeah, that. And everybody can add, uh, add something to bring something to the table. And then I feel like uh, practice has been helping a lot this year. I think it's, practice has been way more competitive this year than, than in the past year. So that uh, everybody's bringing, is coming in with an edge, with a, with a sense of urgency. And I think uh, if we do that from the beginning of the season, that, that it's going to be a, a different team. Not a different team, but it's gonna, we're going to look different and we're going to win more games. So perception being reality, 
I'm going to tell you what the reality is. In my 10 years here, the team that finished the top three in the DER, seven of the 10 years, they came in first place. 10 of the 10 years, they won the tournament. The only time they didn't win the regular season and finish in the top three was once. So nine out of 10 years, the teams were the top three defensive DER teams, and that was our second championship. When we were so great on offense, we came in fourth that year in defense. And they understand that, and they know that, and it's on the back of the door, and it's a daily reminder. But what Garrett said can't be missed. And all we're talking about is the last eight games were 7-1, and one, and our DER was .92, which was the best in the league. The best in the league. So if you defend without fouling, which is huge, and our defensive rebound it continues to improve, which it has, but most importantly, live ball turnovers. Those are the, those that you can't guard a live ball turnover. So it's defense, defense, but that's the one caveat on the other side. And we're pivoting better. We're making better decisions. The Northeastern, who I studied this summer, has really, really helped me. Bill Cohen's been a longtime friend, and I've asked him some, and we've incorporated some of that stuff. So it's really, really been great to see when we scrimmage Bethune, Cookman, and Mercer in those private scrimmages. We saw that, and it's coming to fruition in front of their own eyes. And that's huge.